I had transformed from the 25-year-old pre-puberty boy on the left to the 28-year-old horny teenager on the right. Hello and welcome to part 3 of my transformation. So in the first videos I talked to you about how I did not go through normal puberty but I only went through puberty when I was 25 years old and on HRT. Now I kept the best part for the last because in this video I get to tell you how it all actually started. I was once a sad, depressed, sick kid that got through his work week just so that I could outsmoke and outdrink my problems in the weekend. I had never lifted a weight, I didn't know what a day without pain was and I was out of breath going from the, my desk to the coffee machine. Yet somehow I found, I found my way to an old style bodybuilding gym where half of the members were on Michael Harn's diet plan and it changed my life forever. I will tell you how and why fitness saved my life. I'm not going to cover the basics about muscle building or about progressive overload since you already know those from Greg Doucette. I just want to tell you my story. There is going to be a bit of backstory. I will go over my progress pictures. I will talk to you about the biggest mistakes that I make in the beginning uh, and I will end with some scars I kept from my, my transformation. Uh, so hang in there. Before we start, I would like to mention that I am on HRT. I shared this transformation last year on Reddit uh, with my entire HRT protocol, but I still received some private messages saying that I'm on some juice or something. So yeah, I am on HRT. It's actually on Reddit that the Captain America thing started. So let's get to it. As you can imagine, not going through puberty made life at school very difficult when I was a teenager and physical education classes traumatized me because it's during those times where I was laughed at the most. I was bullied a lot in my life because I am different. I am Uranus. So everybody in my class was always happy when there was physical education classes because it meant two hours outside of the boring classroom. But for me, it generated anxiety already two days before because I knew when I was going, going to be in the locker room, somebody was going to say something mean to me. And if there was any team exercise, I knew I was going to be the last kid chosen and I was probably going to make my team lose and I was going to pay for that later. That's where my hate for sports started actually. Kids laughing at me, teachers laughing at me and my body constantly in pain. At home things weren't better and there was nobody to talk to. So when you're bullied for so many years, you actually start to think that you deserve this shit. So now you know the before, a broken body and a broken mind. All right, I'm done with the sad part. Now let me tell you how it actually all started. This is a picture of me when I was 25 years old next to my older brother. After a very successful bulky se bulking season of 25 years, I had reached just about 105 kilos and a body fat of 35%. I hadn't exercised in school and I had no connection whatsoever with my body. It was like driving this old Renault Twingo, you know, it takes you from point A to point B, but let's face it, you're not gonna have much fun driving it. So how did I ever make it into a gym? Well, I had this old style bodybuilding gym right next to my work with every piece of equipment being twice my age. I was using their parking for free and one of my colleagues saw it one day. The only colleague that actually respected me at work. Well, he challenged me to go there. Of course I was never going to go there. Not in a million years. Just the thought of undressing myself in front of other people gave me diarrhea. I'll give you the short version. After a good year of procrastinating, I had a moment where I didn't use my brain. There simply was no logical thinking. I already had the keys of my car in my hands, ready to go home and play Call of Duty, and I just turned around and I went to the gym instead. It turns out that one moment where I didn't use my brain was the single most important decision I ever took in my life because it was the start of my transformation. So was it easy? Was I like those magical TikTok uh, transformations going from zero to hero in just six weeks? Well, of course not. The owner of the gym showed me some exercises and I started doing cardio for the first time in my life on the elliptical, but my joints weren't ready for the stress I was putting on them. Every workout left me sore for days and my condition was also a disaster. I used to be out of breath even before I was reaching the elliptical. If I could go back in time and have a conversation with myself, I would change everything I was doing in there because I did the most stupid rookie mistakes possible because I just didn't know any better. I'll talk about the mistakes I did a bit later in the video. Let me know in the comments how your very first workouts went 
because let me tell you, I will never forget mine. The beginning was hard, very hard. Also, my hormones were still flatlined, you know. I remember sometimes I wanted to quit, one time in particular. So after a couple of weeks, I asked the owner of the gym to show me some new exercises and he explained me how to bench press. Now I was on the bench press with the smallest fucking plate possible on each side, two and a half kilograms, and I couldn't lift the bar. I actually injured my shoulders. So after a couple of attempts, the guy looks at me from toes to bottom and he just tells me, Uranus, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. You're just, you're just not like the others. You're just not strong. Those aren't even the weights I use to coach women. Seven years later, I'm still going back to that gym from time to time and I have a good laugh with the owner about that incident. But back then, I went home with tears in my eyes that evening. But you know what? I never gave up and I never will. The next day, I was back there and since I was injured, I focused mainly on doing cardio. This old elliptical machine that holds together with duct tape became my best friend and I lost 20 kilograms on that machine. Every time I go back to that gym, I have to go back to my elliptical because me and that machine have a special relationship and because I like to remember the times where I was on that machine, almost dying and looking at the clock on the wall uh, every two seconds. So when exactly did fitness save my life? Well, after losing about 20 kilograms on the elliptical, I gained a bit of confidence and I started dating this chick I really digged for a long time. Now it turns out having the body of a child when you're 25 years old isn't very good for starting a relationship and I got ditched the very same day I opened up about my health issues by text message and that was it. I reached the lowest point ever in my life. I was really depressed because of my health issues, I just lost my job and the only girl I, I ever digged just ditched me too. So I made a decision. I stopped drinking, I got my shit together and the gym became my ally. That's when the gym saved my life. It really changed from something I liked to something I needed. Now I heard a lot of transformations start with people getting ditched and for me getting ditched was the start to my HRT transformation because that's actually where I finally went to the doctor and I finally started seeking treatment. Now at the beginning of course I was spending a lot of time in the hospitals for different tests for uh, genital examinations and other stuff you don't want to know and during all that time I didn't have any support circle or nobody to talk to so the gym became the glue that held me together and seven years later when shit hits the fan in my life and it actually does quite often the gym is still the thing that holds me together. Now let's go through my progress pictures. Hang in there because you're about to see a 25 year old go through puberty in the gym. So my first day on HRT is the starting point. Unfortunately back then I was really ashamed of myself and I was really still shy so I didn't take any progress pictures at all the first year when I was doing the elliptical. So I lost 20 kilos but without any progress pictures. The first picture I have is the first day I started HRT and I'm about 85 kilograms there for 188 centimeters. This is about two months after starting HRT. There aren't a lot of visual changes yet other than some armpit hair, but my voice had dropped from people asking me if I was a boy or a girl to my friends suddenly asking, why the hell do you sound like Barry White suddenly, man? What's going on? Mostly I was doing cardio and I was still shedding a lot of weight. I was on HCG monotherapy and I was happy looking because I was finally waking up with morning wood. This is four months in and it is my lowest weight ever of 75 kilos. I lost 30 kilograms in total. Now I feel a bit ashamed saying this, but at the time I wanted to go even lower. I wanted to go unhealthy. I had become obsessed with losing weight because so many times in my life people were laughing at me because I was fat. I had become obsessed and I had the body dysmorphia and I wanted to go lower and lower. Luckily, the HRT that was now firing on all cylinders in my body made me way too hungry. Like I had never felt hunger like that in my life. Seriously, I was eating two or three times what I was eating when I was obese. People were genuinely scared of, in my, of inviting me to barbecues because I would eat so much. I was waking up horny and hungry, which, has ne which had never happened before. Of course, I was still years away from actually tracking my macros. This is five months in. Now you can definitely see that I was eating more food. That's also the time where I switched from a cardio based workouts to lifting weights. I still remember bench pressing on my own for the first time and feeling that pump in my chest. Even if I still knew nothing about proper lifting, 
I enjoyed what I was doing and that was very important. This is nine months in. Now physical changes were becoming more and more clear and I was starting to look way more masculine. I even started to develop some body hair. At that point, people I hadn't seen in a while didn't recognize me anymore. My body was changing so much, it was crazy at the time. Like, I used to work out with my brother that is 9 years younger. And of course, he didn't yet know I was on HRT. Nobody knew except my mother because someday she opened the door of the fridge and she saw my HCG ampoules in between the mustard and the mayonnaise. So my brother didn't know and we were work working out together and we were undressing in the locker room and he was like, bro, what is going on with you? Like, seriously. Week after week, he could see my attitude change, my body change, my voice change, and it, it was just crazy at the time. It's a story for a different time, but my brother that's nine years younger than me actually started puberty before me and then I caught up with him. So we actually have a lot of experience to share together. I mean, when you think of it, who goes through puberty with their brother that's almost a decade younger than you are? We almost discovered the female anatomy for the first time almost the same week, you know? This is one year after I started HRT. Even though I spent hours researching proper form on Scott Herman's videos, sometimes I was just too shy in the gym to actually get to a barbell or a squat rack. I was still focused way too much on what, what, on what I thought others were thinking about me. So I lost a lot of time and that's also why I was taking so few progress pictures because I was just too shy. Now, it might not look like much of a physique yet, but now when I look back in one year's time, the evolution was amazing. I made some proper newbie gains. The weights were the only support I had, so I was very consistent going to the gym four or five, or five times a week. I wasn't tracking my lifts, I wasn't tracking my macros, I wasn't on any workout program yet. Mostly, I was just doing my thing because I just didn't know any better at the time. And that went on for a long period of time. Like I would, I, I used to be the guy spending two hours in the gym going from machine to machine just because I didn't have the knowledge yet. I will get to it later, but I made every rookie mistake possible on my journey and I had more injuries and setbacks that I can count. This is about one year and a half in. It's funny because I'm looking at these pictures years later and I'm amazed by the progress I made. These days I've been lifting for six years and progress is really slow. Damn, I would love to make those, those gains again, you know? This was about two and a half years in. It's also about the time where I switched from HCG monotherapy back to testosterone injections. It's also around that time where I was finally tracking my workouts, I was finally tracking my macros, and I was on some programs I found on bodybuilding.com, you know, when they were still free. So I was lifting and eating more properly. I had transformed from the 25-year-old pre-puberty boy on the left to the 28-year-old horny teenager on the right in two and a half years of HRT and lifting. Looking at a picture of course is very easy, but it doesn't tell the entire story because trust me, going through puberty in your late 20s is not easy at all. As I said in my previous video, I didn't feel good all the time on the medication the doctors put me on and it took me years to find a doctor who actually treat patients and not numbers on a piece of fucking paper. I had a tough time accepting myself and I didn't see all the changes back then so I didn't enjoy them. Like right now I'm putting the pictures side by side and of course I can see a lot of changes but back then I still suffered from body dysmorphia and I could put the pictures side by side like now and I would not see the changes. This is four years after a good cut. I even had the Calvin Klein underwear thing going on back then. Now don't go thinking that I have Instagram potential or that I have good genetics. I'm only showing you the good pictures and I did every rookie mistake possible. I will tell you about some of the mistakes I did. Number one, first of all, except for my genitals, I don't think that there is a single body part that I didn't injure in the gym. From my knees to my elbows to wrists, fingers, you name it, I've injured it. I even landed in the ER once after chest day. Having never exercised before and having hormones like this, my weak joints weren't ready for the stress I was putting on them. I mean, I was so stupid in the beginning, I was sometimes just copying what somebody else was doing in the gym and of course, that's not the way to go. If I could go back in time, I would change everything about what I was doing in the gym in the first years, honestly. Secondly, one of the biggest mistakes I did was listening way too much to what other people tell me. 
You wouldn't believe the shit that goes around these days in commercial gyms. I believe they call it bro science. Well, in the beginning, I was listening way too much to bro science instead of doing my own research. The third mistake I did is every time I was bulking up, I got chubby again because in my mind it was perfectly normal to gain 20 pounds of muscle on every bulk. People would, tell, people would tell me, yeah son, you gotta eat big to get big, you know? You remember that physique with the dog face and the, and the visible abs? Well, I went from this to this in less than 7 months while counting my macros just because people would tell me, yeah, you gotta eat big to get big, man, you gotta eat. But that's the great thing about fitness. You fail, you learn, and then you come back for more. The weights will always be there for you, and there's always not a chance of reaching your greatest physique ever. These days, I'm on a PPL routine, three days on, one day off, and I've been tracking my food intake for a couple of years now, and I don't make as many mistakes as I once did. It took me six years to transform my body. I gained a good 15 kilograms of muscle, but yet sometimes, because of body dysmorphia, I still see the guy on the left instead of the guy on the right. So why exactly did fitness become so important to me? Well, when I told people I was on HRT, they were like, wait, what? You're injecting things into your body like with needles? Are you crazy, man? When I said I was lifting, I got reactions like, wait, what? You're one of those gym fanatics injecting things into your body? Do you know these people, they can't have erections anymore and their balls, they become like grapes, you know? You dirty bastards. Why can't you do something normal like cycling or, or ping pong? People around me were more eager to put me down than to help. As a result, I just stay in my own bubble and the gym became my support. The gym was always a place where I could unstress, deload. I arrive in a certain state and I leave as a completely different person. And that is still the same these days. Before opening the door of that gym, I had no connection with my body whatsoever and I hated exercising. Now, I couldn't imagine my life without exercising actually. Fitness allowed me to feel good in my body, to love my body and to be one between mind and body. Arnold talks about the mind-muscle connection, but for me it was even more. It was about the mind-body connection. I did keep some scars from my journey. First of all, there is the loose skin. Unfortunately, I kept a pancake of loose skin around my mix section, especially my love handles, and it gives my body a weird shape and it messed with my mind for a long time because I used to think it was fat. I will never have those deep ab cuts and when I'm wearing tight clothes, it really looks like fat hanging. There is nothing I can do about it, so I have accepted it. When I'm standing, it doesn't look that bad, but when I'm sitting, it looks like shit. I used to be self-conscious about it, but now I've moved on. Gynecomastia. As you can see on the before picture, I used to store a lot of fat in my chest area, even after losing 20 kilograms of weight. You can't really see it that well, but I really used to walk around with man boobs and I was ashamed of that. When I went to the seaside, I wouldn't remove my t-shirt because I didn't want the look of others on me. Luckily, once I dropped more weight and started my HRT journey, eventually it got way better. Uh, I did a mammography and an echography of my uh, chest area and it confirmed that there is more tissue than necessary um, in my nipples. Well, actually under my nipples. But actually, when I gained more muscles, visually it got way better and I'm not self-conscious about it anymore. Mentally, not going through puberty until the age of 26 definitely left some scars up here and counseling helped. I had to deal with stuff normal people just, just don't have to deal with. I don't want the video to be too long, so I will just give you one example. Like 5 months into treatments, I started working in a new place. I literally have a colleague who saw me go through puberty in front of his own desk. This picture was taken the first day I started working there, and after one year I had already transformed into this, and after two years, like that. Now imagine what it would have been like for you if you had only started puberty at 25 years old. Normal, I would never be. But what is normal anyway? Alright, that's all for today. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video and my physical transformation. Subscribe and thank you for watching. Oh, and one last thing. If you're going to transform, take some decent transformation pictures. Don't be like me, just too shy to take your pictures because really you will regret it afterwards. Take some good pictures. Thank you. Uranus out.